being in the shadow, the way that we are doing our interview now, in a way it's absurd because with my face, uh, maybe I'm gonna have problem because of what I'm saying. But the, the thing that I'm going to say is, is something really normal about our daily life in Iran. Living in Tehran, um, I guess, is has its ups and downs, and a lot of times you get disappointed in a way that I don't think that other people in the world experience it. We are all grown up with a secret life, that is, with our drinking, with our girlfriend, with our parties. We all have a secret life. Two totally different lives. Uh, but when you are inside and you're living that life, um, you don't know it, you're used to it, you're, you have grown up with it. You have grown up with uh, those things and it wasn't really difficult at the moment. It's what you believe in and what they want you, what they want you to believe in. So um, inside I live the way I want to and outside I have to <laughs> live the way they want me to. So. <laughs> You know, in Iran, in a way, uh, social circles of men are separated from social circles of women because we don't go to gym together, we don't go to classes together, that sort of thing. You grew up in a totally different society. It, it's, it's, I can't um, blame it on the religion. Oh, well, of course I can blame it on the religion. It, it's 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 the society that you grow up in. It, Maybe that's why, I mean, uh, things like Facebook and messengers are so popular in Iran because they, they, they make a link between, I mean, male and female social circles. I met my I met I met my girlfriend. We are colleagues actually. We are colleagues but in our company, our our firm, we pretend we don't know each other. Nobody knows we know each other. I mean knew my girlfriend through Yahoo. Obviously we used to meet at coffee shops or, you know, sit in our car, or go hang out in the streets. I do remember the time that we were like scared that, you know, we might have passed like a police station and they might have stopped us, but it didn't happen. But we, all, we always had the fear, you know. <laughs> A lot of things that they are forbidden. Uh, I told you that it's forbidden to be you sometimes. Having a party in your own house uh, is illegal and the interesting thing is that this um, this thing has has changed during uh, different periods of time during these 30 years after the revolution sometimes they've been much harder and it was very very dangerous to have a party you have to find a house which is safe in a way that there's no parent or uh, going to the house of some friends sometimes the neighbors are bothered by, by the sound of the music and they call the police, knowing that uh, it's, it's a huge risk for the people there because they can get lashed, they can get jailed, they can, uh, and they can have a lot of problems with their family, but sometimes people just do that. I know there is a difference between uh, carrying alcohol, so having the bottles and everything, and uh, being actually drunk, but I 
don't know the exact difference, but I, I know it's lashing and maybe a couple of days in jail. It's un unbelievable for you because you're a foreigner. <laughs> but we are Iranian and we used to it. Easy way to have alcohol is uh, Armenians in Iran. Armenians, they are uh, not Muslims and they have uh, this career, <laughs> kind of illegal career. You get a number by one of your friends who have a con friends who have a connection and make a call. Then uh, you make an appointment with the people who sell alcohol. For example, he says, he tells you, come in front of that pizza shop or somewhere else. Okay. You know, what we are doing is dangerous. But if they arrest you, you can pay some money and they release you. Um, the alcohol I'm going to buy now, the Iraq, is like a vodka and cost, uh, let's say, $10 for liters. Okay, we arrived, this is the place. <laughs> We are problems uh, in the way we are. So, uh, as an Iranian young girl, when you are not like the symbol of a Iranian government woman, you are a problem. Especially Iranian young women, because all of the limitations that they have, they are not allowed to dress what they like in the street. So it comes out, it comes all out in the face. So heavy, heavy makeups, fixing whatever you can in the face. If you wear lipsticks or wear makeup, they they can um, stop you by the street and they can disturb you by telling you something or make you. Uh, clean it up, or uh, sometimes if you, they want to, they can uh, also arrest you. A kind of uh, protest that government doesn't want to do that, we do that. The face is so important. I mean, when you have veil and you have many limits, and you want to, you want to show yourself. Um, I've got five close friends and all of them have, no, actually I've got six very close friends, they all have nose jobs. I'm the only one amongst my friends who hasn't got one, so. You know, respecting to maybe European faces, Iranians have larger noses, but it's not that they're always ugly in their faces. This is that part of the, the westernizing, uh, Eastern countries, that we are all uh, compared to the, the Western standards of, uh, of everything. It's the genetics and the perfection that people are looking for in just the face that they can show. So, you know, if you, have, if you had like your whole body to work on, obviously you wouldn't have so much emphasis. There was a time when it was only girls or younger women. Now you walk in the street, it, 
it's middle-aged women, middle-aged men, and everybody. The only thing that you dispose in the streets is, is your face, so basically, that's why you work on it so much. color to to everyday life of uh, women in Iran was a I can say it was a revolution that that happened from uh, 10 years ago or, or maybe less than 10 years ago my mom still tells me and, and she's not a religious person that some things are not for us dressing in a certain way is not made for us maybe for some other people it wouldn't be a problem but it's not made for us that there, there is an us here you don't have an in individuality I don't know what's going on in other small cities. I, I feel that uh, all women, they, they, they all like color and uh, they, they, for sure, they, they prefer to, to, to seem more beautiful. When I travel around Iran, sometimes um, I feel like a tourist going to another country. When you go to smaller cities than Tehran, it's I have felt um, some sort of hate that, that I am not accepted, especially for a woman. Yeah.